It's Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Palmer and it's inside the state capitol in Lansing. We are joined today by a member of the Michigan House of Representatives. His name is Jason Shepard. My oh my, Michigan insurance <laughs> rates are still the highest in the nation. We know that they are higher by about 88% than the nationwide average at over $1,300 a year. It is painful. And this is Michigan. Yes. We're the auto capital of the nation. Come on, what's going on, sir? So I will say this, coming from the community that I represent, which is Monroe County, which is a mile north of Ohio, right. they are a third of the rate of what we have in Michigan. My constituents have been asking and, and pleading right, to have some changes done to this, uh, to this no-fault system. I have proposed legislation this term. Uh, will probably be reintroduced next right, term that right. allows you to pick your level of medical coverage so that you can oh. not always have to purchase the unlimited. You can, you can pick the exposure that you want for you and your family. And so let's talk about that because currently the challenge for Michigan is that there's the Michigan Catastrophic Claims Association which covers all medical expenses with no lifetime limits. Now, on the one hand, that feels good because if there is a catastrophic accident, you do want that lifetime of coverage if there's some type of paralysis. But talk me through how we balance. So real simple, we have, if you compare us to other no-fault insurance states, right. the highest medical limit you have in other no-fault states is $50,000. Everything else then goes to your private insurance based upon the coverage that you have paid for right, from your employer right. or what you have currently. So we're the only one that has unlimited. You do not reach the catastrophic claims fund until you've blew past $535,000 right. right. of medical. So what happens is, is because there's no real schedule of fees attached to an auto claim or auto accident, and because it's unlimited coverage, it breeds some, some interesting debates <laughs> on yeah. not only fraud, but what attendant care looks like. It also breeds debates on do we need to carry that much coverage? You know, if you don't drive very much, or if you have a, a plan that offers auto health on your on your health care, why are we paying for two health care policies at that point? But the concern becomes not so much what you choose to do. If you get injured in your accident and it's your fault, okay, you chose a certain level of coverage. It's when you hurt another person. So how does your bill or bills floating out there address that question? So the simple answer to that is this. You pick your level you're comfortable with on that. For yourself? For yourself, regardless of what goes on regarding an accident right. that happens. You would then pick that based upon what medical coverage do you currently have for you and your family. Okay. So when you work with your employer, you work with where you're purchasing your private insurance, you just make sure that there's coverage for long-term care. Make sure there's coverage for those so that your insurance balances out. I will say this, oh. nine, over 98% of auto accidents never reach right. a $250,000. But what about if you injure someone? So that would be their own policy that they've picked. So basically, because it's no fault, you're on your own insurance. That's the way our state's set up. That's I, the way our I, state's I set I up. I want to talk more broadly about the auto industry. Yeah, absolutely. There's no question that uh, the Obama administration had been kind to the auto industry during the 2009 bailout. We see the incoming administration, um, they, they seem to be a big friend of auto. They want to bring jobs back into Michigan. But everything's layered, as you know, and so uh, there are discussions about if companies don't bring back, tariffs will start to be placed right on products and that could be a double-edged sword. Yeah. Talk me through this, sir. And that is a double-edged sword. We're in a global economy and a global industry is going to look at what makes sense for them. Obviously, if you're building cars here and shipping them to a China, which is an emerging market, that's gonna be very costly. So, so for a company, they need to look at building in some of these other countries, right. however. But, but I must ask, I mean, yep. the incoming administration has been very clear, they don't right. wanna see that. They're looking more towards the, the, the more regional, in my estimation, the mm -hmm. Canada, the Mexico uh, industry. And the reason for that is because we need to be competitive. You know, we have a corporate tax rate that's higher. We, in the state of Michigan especially, when I look at what we can do here to bring back manufacturing, that includes incentive programs. That includes allowing industries to, to look at us as a competitive state. Right now, that's kind of where we get a little lopsided. If you look at, um, yeah. be before, we, before we go on, if you look at what happened back when the auto industry took its collapse, states were clamoring to keep those jobs. 
manufacturing itself, a lot of those move to other states in the United States because like a Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, right. we're welcoming them in and wanting to build factories there to keep those jobs. We have to start being competitive like that again here in Michigan to bring the actual manufacturing back that possibly has left this state. But even some of the allies of the incoming administration have called some deals that do provide incentives, crony capitalism, corporate welfare. And so, yeah, look, nothing's easy. nothing's easy. And so how do we balance the desire to bring those jobs back? You know, th there may be federal incentives, but you're talking about state incentives. Right. Um, I mean, look, with the recent carrier deal, uh, Mr. Pence, incoming vice president, was hammered because of this notion that he gave away, you know, the kitchen sink to keep those jobs. So in my estimation on that, if it was every state lowered their arms, so to speak, in uh -huh. this arms race when it comes right. to being competitive, then we can have different conversations. But when you have states like a Georgia and you have right. states like a Louisiana, you have states like a North Carolina and a Tennessee that are begging for industry to come down there and offering them everything that they can, how do we compete with that? I'm glad you brought that up because look, I'm willing for a food fight yep. to occur between states because right. we can, we we can, can make it that, work. Right. But when other nations start getting involved, that's what makes Michiganders nervous. Correct. Because look, we can say a lot of things about Mexico, Canada, China, but we sell a ton to those countries. I mean, Mexico, I think, you know, we import, I don't know, almost 250 billion and export about yeah. 250 billion. If all of a sudden those drop, that would be devastating for Michigan. Right. And it's about being competitive and not mm -hmm. making knee jerk reactions to things and just raising certain things in, in, a, in a fair and balance. You know, we, we look at even products that come into the United States. One of the things that I was working on this year was when we import products from, say, a China, from maybe a subpar manufacturer that right. just copies what we do. Well, that, that, with, yeah. Without a standard attached to it, that's an issue to me. So that's what we have to look at. If we're gonna look at this globally, we gotta look at what's competitively fair as opposed to just pinpointing one or two incidents. We gotta say, okay, how do we become competitive as a nation right. for all industry compared to wherever we're else? But at a certain going? level, I mean, to be competitive with Mexico, it's, it's gonna be tough. Yeah. They don't have the same worker protections, insurance. Right. It's gonna be a challenge. And so I'm wondering, I mean, is it such a calamity if Ford has some manufacturing in Mexico, but maybe brings the product back mm -hmm. and assembles it in right. Detroit or Ohio. Well, and the other part, point I'm going to make is what you're going to see is a lot of companies took a dip in the water in some of these other areas and are bringing them back naturally right. because of the workforce. Right, we have a better workforce, We're presumably. We're very competitive in that workforce portion. So a lot of times, when you start looking at bottom line, you start comparing quality, you start right. comparing who can do it better? Who can do it quicker? What's our infrastructure like? That's why I think infrastructure is very important in our nation because we have to have the logistics right. to be able to ship and be able to do the things which we can compete at that level with some of these other countries that don't have the infrastructure programs in place that we do. Clearly, you know from what you speak. Yeah. And so what I'm wondering is, can you speak with our representatives in Washington to explain the layered, textured, complex nature of this equation. If I could fix Washington, <laughs> I would be sitting here discussing these things. But at least right you now. can speak with them. I would love to speak with everybody there, but man, I tell you what, that is like walking through syrup. <laughs> His name is Jason <laughs> Shepard. He is a member of the Michigan House of Representatives. We're inside the state capitol today in Lansing, Michigan. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's Charlie. <laughs>